to President Hamilton, trustees and faculty, good morning and thank you. I am thrilled to share this special occasion and truly honored that you've included me among your ranks. To the class of 2019, <laughs> congratulations on all you have accomplished. As a career-long university teacher and a mother of two college students, I am especially proud of you because I know the commitment and dedication it takes to make your way through these years of study. It is stunning to be here in Yankee Stadium, I just want to say. <laughs> it is amazing. I am also humbled to join this extraordinary assembly of accomplished honorees and to speak with them in wishing you well on your journey. I got more to say. This moment is exhilarating. And now I want to take that moment to say thank you, for you all to say thank you, for everyone who helped you get to today, the families you were born into, the families you grew up with, nuclear families and far-flung families, moms and dads and grandparents and siblings and guardians and aunties and uncles, Thank you to the queer families, to the chosen families, and to the families you created for yourselves in school. Here's what family is. It's the people who commit to love each other. So now is the time also in thinking about everybody who encouraged you and supported you when you were at NYU as you studied and blossomed, everyone who cooked meals for you, everyone who kept you of sound mind and body, everyone who believed in you. None of us accomplishes this alone. So now please just take a moment to cheer for your cheerleaders. So I do a number of different things. I'm a scholar, I'm a writer, I'm a professor, I'm a mom, I'm president of a foundation. And before all that, and perhaps in order to become all of that, I was a poet, I am a poet. And my job, as I see it, is always to make visible that which is hidden to join common words in uncommon ways to illuminate the realities tucked beneath the apparent. If we believe in the power of words and that words matter, if we believe that words carry not only meaning but also something actually human, if we believe that shared language and the exchange of language is in fact one of the very things that makes us human, if we believe that precision with the word matters, that striving for absolute precision is one of the ways that human beings can communicate deeply enough to overcome that which divides us. If we also believe that there is too much language in the air that is imprecise, false, harmful, operating not to bridge understanding, but rather to create misunderstanding. That there is inelegant language that is being used for the purpose of calling us out of our names and dividing us. Then we might think about poetry and its possibilities. Poetry can uniquely hold complexity and contradiction. Poetry allows us to live with a lack of resolution and makes time for that misunderstanding to shift. And we need not be poets to believe that poetry and the lessons of this communication has meaning that's transferable to us all. The power of language is to assert presence, is to speak truth to power, is to make space 
is to see each other as human beings. Because our society on this day that you graduate is engaged in too many fraught conversations about who belongs, who merits our attention, who is seen as human, in the midst of a horrible laying bare of anxieties and violence taking form in the language of who is truly American and who belongs, I put this challenge to you. How do we understand the stakes of precise language? What is the power of your words once you are in the room? What can you do with your words to move us closer to beloved community? I think that challenging each other and using our words and exercising free speech means that we understand that our words are vessels filled with meaning and intent. So on this commencement day, let us reflect on how we can each make each other more visible with our words and deeds, and in so doing, build a better world. Because whether we are seen and how we are seen by each other is deeply connected to whether we are free. And what I'm really here to talk to you about today is freedom. Consider the fact that throughout the entirety of America's history, the majority of those who have enjoyed the greatest measure of freedom have also benefited from robust visibility in media, in public spaces, in bookshelves, in classrooms, at the head of our institutions, free to do things sometimes that more marginalized people cannot. Think about what it means to use your power to shine light on the voices that show us collectively the beauty of what it is to be human, what it is to live in community, and what it is to be free. I think that there are aspects of freedom that go beyond ideas of ownership. Think of these possibilities in the word free. What does it mean to be free to love who you want to love? What does it mean to be free to move where you want to move? What does it be, mean to feel free to live where you think it's best to live and free to walk in the expectation that you may be safe? What does it mean to be free to exercise your right to vote? Our dynamic lawmaking has addressed some of this and continues to, but the struggle for freedom is ongoing. What does it mean to have freedom of speech? Does that mean we have the freedom to say whatever we want to say, whenever we want to say it, just because we want to say it and are free to do so? Or does it mean that we use that freedom to use our speech responsibly to bring difficult truths across the human bridge with the goal of increasing communal ties and understanding. We're gonna keep talking about freedom and turn for a moment to the wisdom that we find in arts and culture that I hope is with you, close to you, in you, alongside for you your entire lives. In poetry in particular, the ineffable is put into clear words that sound a bell through the noise of the day. With poetry, we watch muddy water come clear. And we can understand ourselves through art and culture in the lives of others and have that wonderful experience of saying, yes, I know that, I feel that, I understand that even with lives that may feel very far from our own. Art allows us to imagine what is out of sight but may be right around the corner. And poetry helps us vision freedom. Langston Hughes, in 1925, asked, what does it mean to be free within ourselves? He wrote, we build our temples for tomorrow, strong as we know how, 
and we stand on top of the mountain, free within ourselves. He understood that speaking truth is not only about the self, but also about freeing space for others to speak. Guided by Langston, here is what I wish for all of you beautiful graduates. I wish for you the freedom to love abundantly. That's my biggest advice, love abundantly. <laughs> In fact, that's the whole graduation speech, love abundantly. And to let your minds, made so strong by study, think consistently outside of the box as you also learn history and listen to elders. I wish your free thinking to drive you to contribute to the communities you will become a part of. I wish you the freedom to move around this big, beautiful world. I wish you the freedom to do as you will with your own bodies, the bodies that you and you alone know best. The freedom to do as you will with the bodies that you and you alone live in. As wishing does not make it so, I hope that you will let the thinking and learning that you've been doing in this extraordinary community, a community that spans the world, make you braver on behalf of others. Always asking yourself, who is not in the room, not at the table, not in Yankee Stadium, and excluded from necessary conversations? We must dream and always strive to vision and work for a better world. I want to bring us to conclusion with the poet Robert Hayden on the question of freedom. In his sonnet, Frederick Douglass, dedicated to the great abolitionists. We need abolitionists now as in the 19th century for the many, many causes that threaten our freedoms and call for our voices. Robert Hayden wrote, wondering about freedom, and this is one of my favorite poems in the world. When it is finally ours, this freedom, this liberty, this beautiful and terrible thing, needful to man as air, usable as earth, when it belongs at last to all, when it is truly instinct, brain matter, diastole, systole, reflex action, when it is finally won, when it is more than the gaudy mumbo jumbo of politicians. This man, this Douglas, this former slave, this Negro beaten to his knees, exiled, visioning a world where none is lonely, none hunted, none alien. And let me repeat those words of Hayden's, visioning a world where none is lonely, none hunted, none alien. This man, superb in love and logic, shall be remembered. Class of 2019, I believe that you can create this world where none is lonely, none hunted, none alien. I believe that you can create a world where all people have community and safety where we can all belong and be known. No matter what you do after today, you can help those around you see and help others be seen. You can bring someone to the proverbial table. Whether you be entrepreneurs or entertainers, activists or artists, teachers or traders, scientists or social workers, you can free someone else. 
as professors or policymakers or philanthropists or parents or poets, you can help communities and the people in them be safe. And it starts right here in this stadium with the people around you on this glorious day to celebrate you, your classmates, the families here, the families you choose in concentric circles moving out from your intimacies. Build a world around you like the one to which Hayden aspires, where you are fully visible, deeply known, and free. And if you use your freedom to bring freedom to others, if you think of your words as making space for others to speak their truths and not merely clearing the stage for your solo, here is what I promise you will happen. You will learn more, know more, imagine more, laugh more, feel more, and be more connected in community. This is my dream, and this is my dream for you, class of 2019 NYU. Good luck to all of you, congratulations, and love. Thank you.